Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Daily Express's Royal Roundup. We are, of course, joined by Daily Express's Royal Correspondent, Richard Palmer. Richard, hello. Hi. Uh, it's been a very busy week uh, for Royals, hasn't it? We've uh, we've oh, had christening uh, over in the US, the confirmation of royal titles, and of course a big story today uh, that we will go into full depth about. As long as uh, you guys carry on listening, carry on asking the questions that you want to ask, uh, then please do in the comment section. But Richard... To kick off with the biggest story, I would possibly say this week in terms of a world perspective, would you agree with me? It would have to be the christening. Well, I think the fallout from the christening, the yeah, the, yes. the announcement that um, Harry and Meghan's children are indeed uh, a prince and princess, um, which had remained unclear um, ever since their birth, really, Um uh, well, ever so certainly ever ever since the king the, the the king acceded to the throne, because um, I think as as a lot of people will know, um, under rules set out in 1917 by King George V, uh, the male line grandson oh, grandchildren um, of the sovereign are princes and princesses or are entitled to be called princes and princesses, mm-hmm. but it really wasn't clear whether Harry and Meghan wanted their children to have those titles. Right. And I, and I guess it poses the question, you know, they stepped down from senior royal life. Uh, they seem to have distanced themselves away from everything that they've said about the whole institution, even though Harry has said he still believes in the monarchy, which is important. But it doesn't seem like this really coincides with what they're saying from my perspective. I, I expected that they wouldn't have titles. Yeah, given how much time they spent slagging off the the monarchy and the, the hierarchical system within it, it, it during those Netflix programs and, and and I guess a little bit in Harry's book it, you know some people may well be surprised that they um, they, they want these titles for their children um, I guess you know you, part of the context as well you also have to look at the interview that uh, Megan gave to Oprah Winfrey back mm. in March 2021, where she was claiming that Archie wouldn't be made a prince because he was, you know, because of his mixed race origin, um, which um, didn't seem credible, didn't seem right at the time. Um, you know, it was clear that at that point, um, their children weren't entitled to be called prince and princess under these 1917 rules. But as mm. soon as um, the Queen had died, and 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 the then Prince Charles had become Charles the Third. Then that should have happened automatically, um, but we were all left not quite knowing what the position was. Um, yeah, and there's quite a lot of anger. You know, you've got John yeah. Herndall there saying the parents don't deserve a title. Um, the it just does seem a bit strange that. They didn't make this clear right from 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 the off. Um, you know, they they went through those Netflix programs and the and Harry's book without making it clear, and um, only now has it, this all come to light. And um, the palace uh, people at the palace, sources at the palace, whatever you want to say, have been trying to say in the last couple of days that well, you know, they were waiting for. Um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to make their wishes um, known um, before they said anything publicly and updated the Mm. line of succession on the royal website, which still had them down as Master Archie Mountbatten Windsor and um, uh, Miss Lilibet. Um, That was swiftly changed yesterday once um, this all became clear, but um, it it uh something you know there's still a little bit of tension there because the sussexes were saying uh in a statement uh overnight um just yesterday really early hours of yesterday morning uk time <laughs> that um their children's position had been settled for for some time and the mm-hmm. palace was aware of this so didn't i, I 
you know, again, you, with 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 the, with this couple, you're never quite sure quite where the truth lies in some of this. But I mean, I, I guess it poses the question: Well, then, why um, have they done this? Is it because of the fact that they want their children to have a choice when they grow up, and they're not making the decision for them? Is it because they still want to have the alignment with the with the raw family? Because obviously, without that alignment and without that tie, it would uh, pose the question of uh, uh, financial interests perhaps is it to do with security from your perspective Richard what is it well I mean they're saying it's their children's birthright <coughs> excuse me but um I think you're right it does pose a question you know what why do they want it when they've moved to America and um seem to be seem to spend an awful lot of time denigrating the British monarchy mm. but um commercially of course it uh retaining their own titles and giving titles to their children certainly adds to their cachet and it, it retains that link with the british royal family it's good for their commercial brand you might say um mm-hmm. so a cynic might might argue that that's why they've done it um Maybe it's yeah it's it's difficult it's difficult to know isn't it but mm. it does also pose the question obviously because of the fact they've got royal titles then it would indicate there's been some kind of correspondence between the palace and them. Yes, um, I think they made that clear that there had been correspondence and um, you know this was one of the there were a number of interesting things that came out of this. I mean. One was that they were actually, if not on speaking terms, were at least engaging um, in email correspondence between the, at least the king's office and um, and them, if not the family itself. I think it, um, you know, there's been a separate thing, hasn't there, about um, Harry and Meghan being invited to the wedding and, you know, them confirming that they'd received email correspondence from mm-hmm. the King's office about that. They're not disclosing at the moment whether they're actually going to come over and attend the coronation, but it, it's looking likely. So that, together with this announcement, um, some of us have read into that, that there's, you know, a slight thawing of uh, relations there. The... Um, the other thing is that they did make it clear that when um, it was People magazine in the US that broke this story, that um, they'd, they'd had Lily Lilibet christened last Friday, mm-hmm. um, that the King and William had, and other, I think other members of the family, had been invited over for the christening but hadn't come. Again, you can, you know, some people said, Royal family snubs uh, yeah. Harry, Harry and Meghan. Others suggested um, it showed that they, you know, that, that things were getting a bit better between them. I think our website probably both said both at various points in the paper. We we sort of our spin on it was that it's looking like things are relations are improving slightly. Intriguing, really. Um, I mean, now, now that they are officially, you know, have titles, uh, the these children, obviously the coronation question still stands. I mean, is there a chance that perhaps the children can, can come over too because they're prince and princess now? Well, I mean, it's a good point. It might, might increase the chances of the children coming over. I think they're probably too young to go to the, the, the coronation itself. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, that that would be my guess, uh, but but who knows? Who knows? We've also got, we've also <laughs> now unfortunately we have to say that quite a lot of the time. I know I'm paid to to know these things, but uh, a lot of what happens in the House of Windsor is quite opaque, and yeah, um, the the institution is often I find really not that um, transparent and not that answerable to the public. So, and there's always this division between, you know, is this a private family matter or is this a matter of state? Is this something that is a matter, a legitimate matter of public interest that we should be delving further into? And it's often not an easy question to answer that. Yeah. 
No. Okay. Um, I guess you've got also relationships uh, under a microscope as well. In terms of who actually they invited for the christening, do we know exactly who they invited? Um, no, I mean, I think they, they did mention by name the King and, and, and the, the Prince of Wales. Um, you know, it, I think it would have been really surprising if they had been able to go over there for that, given everything else that uh, they've got on. I mean, it, it's not something they could have done easily, quite, easily and privately, I suspect. You know, they, we, it probably would have got out. So... Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not surprised it didn't go really. Whatever, whatever. Seems uh, secrecy behind these relations. One week you've got the Frogmore Cottage story. The next week you've got the christening story. Then you've got the title story. Yeah. There, there does seem to be a lot of mixed messaging from like an outside perspective, trying to look in as to where they actually are with these. You said that you know relations are improving, but to what extent? Well, definitely. And yeah, contradictory. I mean, I think the decision to, it's hard not to see the decision to strip them of Frogmore Cottage as a an act of retribution for yeah. some of the things that have gone on in the last few months. So, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, my, my guess, my, you know, my guess is still that they will, um, be invited to the Christ. Well, sorry, we'll come over for the christening. We, you know, we 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 heard I'm yesterday sure. that uh, the palace is planning for them to be there, but yeah. doesn't know that they're definitely coming at the moment. Certainly, palace officials who are involved in planning the dinner settings and the um, car movements and things like that. I mean, it, you know, there, there's a long time to go. And let's be frank, even if they said at this stage we're not coming and they then relented two days before, the likelihood is that plans would be changed and they would be catered for and allowed to come. Mm, OK. Um, well, that's the latest then on that story. What will happen uh, within a few days? Who knows? You never quite know what's coming next, do you, Richard, at the moment? No. Um, I think we took this to a poll to see uh, what you guys thought about senior members of the Royal Family going over to the US. Um, so if we can bring that up. Are you surprised no senior members of the Royal Family went to Princess Lilibet's christening? No, 96%. Uh, so so there you go. I think people can put two and two together and make up their minds themselves. Um, I think the other thing to say about that is if if things were really a lot, lot better, then um, they would have come over here for the christening. You know, I think you would have expected a, a royal christening at Windsor or in well, like, oh, one of the chapels in central London. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but, but there we are. Um, they had an American uh, christening. And I guess they'll have dual, uh, dual nationality, won't they, Richard, the, the Sussex's children? Um, yes, I believe so. Yeah, okay, interesting. Um, all right, we'll move on to today's story then, uh, which is the Duke of Edinburgh title. This has been uh, spoken about a fair bit. No confirmation as to as to who was going to get it, um, but uh, it has been confirmed today, and it's not Prince Andrew Richard. Uh, so, reading between the lines with this, we're gonna we're gonna work out why why that is. Uh, give us the latest. Yeah, I'm not sure where the idea has come from that Prince Andrew's. I don't think Prince Andrew's ever going to get it, and certainly not given everything else that's gone on in his life in the last few years. <laughs> um, in so, so the, I mean, the the the, the, the issue with um, Prince Edward was that when he and Sophie, um, the then Sophie Rees Jones, were married in 1999, Buckingham Palace um, announced on their wedding day that um, <clears throat> they would be made the Earl and Countess of Wessex, didn't want um, princely, ty- princely or princess titles for their children. But um, as a counter to that, I suppose, it had also been agreed between the Queen, Prince Philip, and the Prince of Wales, as he then was, Prince Charles, that when or after Prince Philip died, that Edward would um, assume that title of Duke of Edinburgh. So when Prince Philip did die, um, almost two years ago, 9th of April, I think it was, um, so just a month short of two years ago, um, 
there was no immediate announcement. And it quickly became apparent um, that there was something going on behind the scenes about it. And indeed, even before then, even when Prince Philip was alive, I can remember um, having lunch with a uh, senior royal aide who, well, you know, when I sort of said, well, you know, so, you know, he's becoming, Edward's going to become Duke of Edinburgh, isn't he? Well, is he? I don't know. We don't know. We're not sure. And so there's always some, in spite of that announcement back in 99, there's always some doubt about it. And um, I think it's to do with the fact that um, the king wants the title to remain in the family, but to be a senior title for a working royal. And um, it was clear that um, Edward and Sophie's children, James and Louise, were never going to be working royals. Um, their, their parents really didn't want that for them. So um, what's happened is the, instead of it being an hereditary title, the, um, the, the title will be um, just for Edward's life um, given to him and then it will revert to the crown again. And that paves the way for um, another member of the family to be given the title, possibly Prince Louis in the future. I mean, there's... What does this title actually mean? You know, people hear all these titles, but I don't think people actually understand quite what it quite what it symbolises. It's an honour, really, isn't it? It's a, I mean, it, it doesn't really mean that much to to the rest of us. I, I would I would I would guess it's a senior title, um, so it means that um, Edward is no longer Earl of Wessex. His son James, formerly Viscount Seven, now becomes. Earl of Wessex, but um, because Edward now has a senior Scottish title, uh, well, no, sorry, Edward still has um, his other Scottish title, Earl of Forfa. He keeps that, and um, that will stay until he dies, and then when he dies, James will become, will be then Earl of Wessex and Earl of Forfa. Um Gosh, okay, it's all, it's all very confusing, Richard. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, um, and they, I have to say, they they seem to make up. There, there is often <laughs> no, um, you know, rhyme or reason to some of the things they do, as far as I can see, that um, they, they sort of make up the rules as they go along. And um, so, so anyway. Where does the Andrew I'm, chat come from? I've no idea. I've no idea where, 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 why anybody ever thought Prince Andrew would would be given it because um, uh, you know he's got the Duke of York title, which traditionally goes to the the sovereign's second son, <coughs> um, and um, well, you know, if some MPs had their way, he'd lose that as well, wouldn't they? But um, that isn't really going to happen, I don't think. No. Um, okay then. So, is there any particular kind of ceremony that that goes alongside this title? I don't know. I don't. I don't. There's no public ceremony that, I'm, as far as I'm aware. No. Um, well, I mean, they're they're going to be in Edinburgh at some point. <coughs> Excuse my cough. This afternoon. So at least they're they've got an engagement. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, by the, by the Duke of Edinburgh to actually go to Edinburgh, wouldn't it? Um, yes, so yeah. that's okay. So hopefully we'll see some nice pictures coming from that. I'm sure you'll put them on your Twitter feed, uh, which yeah. at Royal Reporter. Oh, dokie Then um, I think we did a poll on this surrounding the bizarre uh, Prince Andrew chat. Um, if we can bring it up, do you think King Charles granting Prince Edward the Duke of Edinburgh title was the right thing to do? Yes, ninety-seven uh, percent. So, so there you go. He seems like quite a popular royal, Richard. He is with ardent royalists, I think. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, I feel like I'm like that character from the Fast Show from about twenty years ago, who's just always coughing. Um, <laughs> I can't get rid of it today. Um, yeah, I mean, like all of them, he's had his spells when he's not been flavour of the month um, with the public and the press. I can remember when I first started writing about the Royals in about two thousand, early two thousand four, late two thousand three. Uh, I think he was still suffering from. 
the backlash to when he'd been briefly in the Royal Marines and then hadn't really made it. And uh, and I can remember there was a story about him um, handing one of the children, uh, I not think who they, which one it would have been then, um, to uh, you know to an aide to get to lifting the lifting the the aid was taking the child on a plane and you know he got he got some negative publicity over that um but you're right i think that they they keep a fairly low profile the uh, uh, uh the new duke and duchess of edinburgh they don't tend to invite press coverage <coughs> uh when they went to the caribbean the other week the palace was not particularly um, keen on the media going out there to cover them. No, uh, I think they, they, as I've said before, they probably might not have had a job any longer if Harry and Meghan had stayed in the family. I think the original, you know, originally there was some discussion about cutting um, Andrew and uh, Edward and Sophie out of, the, out of the group of working royals um, several years ago. But, of course, all that's changed, and they are now pretty senior working members of the family. And they seem to do a great job whenever, they, as you said, any uh, um, any pictures and everything. And especially <coughs> Sophie, she, she always seems to go down very well. Um, that's for sure. OK, uh, we're going to move on from this now, and we're going to move on to the palace race row uh it it rumbles on in the background uh there was a tv interview uh this week on good morning britain um i thought this was all put to bed richard but apparently not um the i think uh the the palace reiterated uh their apology on this after this interview but why is this still rumbling on and i guess why is it important uh to do with the press surrounding um the, the royal family well you're not alone i mean i was astonished that this had <clears throat> this has reared its head again because i thought they'd um they'd made up and um yeah. and, and sorted things out but um, she did go on TV and go to Fulani and yeah. um, criticised the palace, um, said she'd had an apology from Lady Susan Hussey, but hadn't really had one from the palace. The palace essentially said, well, they had apologised and reiterated that apology. Um, mm -hmm. It's all a bit bizarre. She, she um, has had to, said, she says she's had to stand down from her role with the charity she was working uh, with. And um, she was blaming the media, but I, I think, again, it's this question of uh, um, conflating the media with social media. I think she's had a lot of abuse on social media. Yeah. Uh, um, which which arose because of reporting of the the original complaints that she made she chose to go public about it um why does all of this matter well it's um i think king charles iii has put um diversity and inclusion at the heart of his reign he is very keen to um celebrate britain's diverse communities and really to put to bed the allegations that have arisen from the harry and meghan spat yeah that the firm is somehow racist um, and uh, all of this just heaps further pressure on the palace, doesn't it, to yeah. try to justify its actions and it adds fuel to the fire, um, encourages people, particularly abroad, I'd say, to um, claim that the British monarchy is racist, uh, which I have to say personally I've, I've not found to be true. Do you think he'll be upset by this coming coming around again? Who the king? Um, mm. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, although let's be honest, um, there there is always so much around this family. Mm. I think yeah. it's coming inured to a lot of it. You know, you'll get um, press cuttings 
he listens to Radio Four in the morning in the car. So um, he, you know, he'll have picked up that uh, there's a, there are problems over this again. As I say, I think I think the main, his main worry will be um, that it, um, it, 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 it it takes something away from the, his efforts, you know, and his efforts to heal divisions in our in our society and um, to celebrate Britain's diversity. And mm. not a month goes by, as I wrote the other day, not a month goes by without him and Queen Camilla and other members of the family, actually, um, undertaking official engagements that are aimed at um, celebrating um, Britain's ethnic groups. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, well, they've now reiterated this apology. They said they apologised before. Will this be the last we'll hear about this? I don't know. Um, uh, I guess only time will tell. But Lady Susie Hussey, Susan Hussey is still working. Well, I say working. She's still uh, very much within the, the clan of the royal family as such, isn't she, Richard? She's still going to carry on. She she is. I, I, I mean, her her position is really not that clear. We had a flurry of <clears throat> stories about her a couple of weeks ago when she was spotted going into the palace, and she'd represented um, the the king at um, a, a funeral <clears throat> of a mutual friend. She is very much part of, in the fold, back in the fold. Whether she is working uh, um, there. The palace just won't say. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I, I think we, all, I think we'll see more, more, and more of her as time goes by. Um, but uh, that will be the other, the king's other concern, I suppose, that somehow this is, this is further up, up for, a further upset for her because I, they are quite good friends, and um, she was absolutely devastated by. The reaction to <clears throat> the controversy clearly, she has some has to take some share of the blame for the insensitive way that she handled the original conversation with this lady. Um, but she has apologised, and um, you know, I think, for example, that she attends a church which is a predominantly black church. I mean, you know, the idea that she's racist, I think, is is rejected by anybody who knows her. Um, mm-hmm. But she was just a bit clumsy in what she did that day. And do you think the fact that obviously uh, Harry and Meghan uh, bringing up race within the this documentary, um, you know, which is an important conversation to have, but it's all kind of happened within the same short time period, has only inflated these matters. Well, yes, I think so, and I think it <clears throat> um, because of the context of. Um, the, you know, the Netflix series just about to go out. Um, William and Kate being in Boston when all of this blew up um, <clears throat> back at the end of November. Yes, the, the palace acted very swiftly and essentially, you know, removed her. Um, and I think that she found that really shocking. And um, had it happened at a different point, then there might have been a an apology, but not a removal of her role as a um you know one of the queen's companions what you know sort of modern day version of lady in waiting mm, okay and and um i guess uh you know we'll be seeing we'll be seeing more of her at, at some point but yeah definitely a story to be across um and finishing off um if you're a regular uh, viewer of the raw roundup appreciate we've come on a different time today but if you stuck with us from thursday and uh, to a friday instead of a thursday or if you're on catch up uh, then you will know that uh, we've spoken about um anti monarchy protesters before turning up at events uh, where the royal family will be. This has been becoming more and more of a thing from what I can see, Richard, or it's just the fact that we haven't been covering it so much before, you'd know more than I would. Um, Is the king aware of this? He obviously carries on as usual and so does does the queen and acknowledges that they're there. But, uh, you know, is there going to be steps in place when the coronation happens? That's not going to be a very good look, is it? Can't be unaware of it because (laughs) you've got Graham who's in the far left corner there from Graham Smith from Republic 
the anti monarchy group, blaring questions at him from a, a, a loudspeaker. Um, <laughs> but he, he, he has avoided engaging with them, but, mm. you know, gone very close to them. Certainly Milton Keynes, where I was uh, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, was it? Um, you know, he walked within a few yards of, of them, five, four or five yards. and um, Close then. Yeah. I, it's it's become a regular feature of um, public engagements where the timings or the, um, you know, the action engagements are announced in advance where the idea is that they're going to meet the public. And so that gives um, this particular group, um, Republic, an opportunity to set up a, a, um, a, a demonstration. It's quite a small group. I mean, I think it was it was about 20 of them in Milton Keynes. I think it was a smaller group from what I understand in Colchester, um, but there were two groups actually in Colchester because there was also another group which was led by um, Piers Corbyn, brother of the former Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, yeah. uh, who was really protesting about something else. I mean, he's not that keen on the monarchy, but it was more about um, the environment and about um, the King's work with the World Economic Forum. And you've got these people, conspiracy theorists, who don't like the idea of globalisation, and they see um, the king as one of the leading architects of what they call the Great Reset, um, uh, which involves the World Economic Forum. And essentially, you know, they think it's the world's elite that are... Um, <laughs> ooh, combining... Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where do those bad bites come from? Um, combining together to do us all down. Um, so that yeah, he had that he and Queen Camilla had two different groups um, booing at at them in Colchester the other day. But again, you know, small groups. And um, I yes, I got dogs abuse on on Twitter for mentioning that this was going to be happening, and then for publishing video of it when it did happen. Um, but it's part of the story, you know, it's yeah, it is. part of the story. Uh, Being balanced, Richard. Exactly. And we are going to continue to see it. We will see it at the coronation. They are going to have a protest outside the Houses of Parliament, I think they said, in Parliament Square somewhere. So quite near Westminster Abbey. Um, I mean, please really, you know, what can they do in that situation? Because you've obviously got the freedom of speech argument. You know, if they're not, if they're not, you know, unlawfully protesting, what could they actually do? Could they push them back so that you know the I don't know the king didn't see all of this? Or I mean, uh, you know, well, that would impede yeah, on. Someone's, we've uh, seen that in places. I mean, when when the queen went to Ireland in. When was it 2011 or 2012? I can't. Sorry, I can't remember now. Um, uh, she went to Cork, um, which always known as the Rebel City, and there were a group of Sinn Fein supporters there who were protesting at the royal visit. It was a small group compared to the number of people who turned out to to cheer and clap the Queen or speak to, speak to her. Uh, but the Irish police pushed that group right. You know a long, long way away from where she was actually going to be. Mm. Um, I don't think that's a good look, really. I think, no, um, I think it is either. in a free society, there should be freedom of speech. And again, I get so I get criticised for reporting on Republic. Um, and my paper, to be, to be fair, it, or to be honest, is not that keen on reporting that much about Republic. But my personal view is that um, where an organisation represents possibly a quarter of the British population, roughly it's somewhere between 25 and 20% 20 and 25 to 30% of the British public are opposed to having a monarchy, then you ought to reflect that in the debate at least. Um, the, 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 the difficulty comes where, you know, it's a national celebration, it's party time like at a jubilee or, um, you know, coronation coming up. Um, if you're ruining the day for other people um, who've only, you've come to cheer their new king rather than listen to people booing and shouting abuse. Well, not, not shouting abuse. They're not, I have to say, Republican are not abusive in that sense, although 
you know, there are a few there are a few banners that you might not like. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you, you, well, you know, like one of them um, in both Colchester and Milton Keynes was talking about the friend, King's friendship with Jimmy Savile, the disgrace oh, yeah. mm. presenter. Not uh, a good look. No, it's not a good look, but, I mean, the fact is they were friends. So um, not something they're going to welcome in the, royal, in the royal household, but I think it's just something they have to put up with. And yeah. interestingly, actually, when we went to Boston with the um, Prince and Princess of Wales, senior royal aides there were saying that, the, you know, the the world has changed. We, we recognise the world has changed and... It's like unlikely that we you know, we can't expect any longer to just go to places and be cheered and that and clapped and that's it. You know, um, the monarchy is still a very popular institution in the UK and many other and several other countries, but it's a it's also a matter of controversy. Do all members of the royal family realise this? Yeah, I think so, um, but equally. What can they do? You know, yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't suppose they want to engage because then that it's that's not a good look either. You know, because they they then accused there were there are pitfalls in in, in in trying to engage with people. You, you're never going to win for a start. No, if you're coming from such a strong standpoint, then yes. uh, and I guess you're just giving light to negative press. Um, yes. But, yeah, an interesting debate, nevertheless, um, and I'm sure it won't be the last we'll hear from them if they've got such a loud uh, speakerphone, uh, as you said, as you said, Richard. Um, but I think that is all for this week's uh, Royal Roundup. Um, apologies if you came on here on Thursday, didn't see a message. Uh, we uh, went live on Friday this week. If you're watching on YouTube today at 4 p.m., uh, well, uh, let's hope for no more breaking news between now and then. Uh, we've got about an hour and uh, 20 minutes. Um, but there's been lots to go over this week. Uh, about the christening, the falling for, out from that, uh, anti-monarchists, uh, a new Duke of Edinburgh title. And as you said, Richard, uh, they will be there in Edinburgh this afternoon. So hopefully we'll get um, some nice pictures from that. So stay tuned to Richard's Twitter at Raw Reporter and of course Daily Expresses too, because I'm sure we will have it. Uh, Richard, thank you as per usual. Hopefully we'll be at the normal time next week as Thursday, usually a late lunch slot. Uh, if not, then you can catch up on all of our playlists over on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We're there. Um, so go take a look. Richard, thank you and have a lovely weekend.